So can your thyroid function influence your physical appearance? That's really the focus of this uh, podcast today. So what I want to go over is really the different mechanisms of how thyroid hormones impact your skin, your hair, your nails, joints, uh, body inflammation, systemic inflammation, and so forth. So I think one of the most common things that I've seen in my clinical practice um, is really uh, with my female patients that have come in is really they're just concerned for their hair falling out. So one of the things that thyroid hormones do is thyroid hormones have a significant impact on hair follicles, and there's different mechanisms of how that takes place, and it's not always the same thing. So one of the things that, that you know everyone will read about is that if their hair is thinning, if they're female and their hair is starting to fall out, or they're taking a shower and all their hair is you know coming off, or the brush is just this big enough hair, it's very concerning for, for many people, obviously, and they're really worried that this is going to continue, and it really um, is a you know, real concern for many people. And hypothyroidism or low thyroid function is a contributing factor to this, but it's more than just one mechanism. And some people will go on thyroid hormones and it will correct it. And other people will go on thyroid hormones and it won't because there's more than one factor involved with what's happening. So let's talk about hair thinning, hair loss first. When we talk about physical appearance, and then we'll get into all the other things that can take place uh, in a hypothyroid or low status, low status state. Now, before we go any further, we should just really point out the number one cause of hypothyroidism is really an underlying autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's, right? So uh, most people that develop hypothyroidism about 95% or more uh, really uh, develop hypothyroidism because their immune system destroys their thyroid gland. And this is identified through lab tests called TPO antibodies or thyroid globin antibodies. And they're not routinely done, even though when people get diagnosed with hypothyroid, but that's the main cause for hypothyroidism. Now, you know, people always ask, well, if that's the main cause, what are the other causes? What are the other 5% of causes? Well, sometimes people have like radiation therapy that destroys your thyroid or they get an infection into the thyroid gland, like a bacterial infection or viral infection that'll destroy some of the thyroid gland. That's the other um, major reason why some some people develop hypothyroidism. But the most common cause of hypothyroidism is really due to this autoimmune mechanism called Hashimoto's that takes place. Now, the reason I bring that up is because with Hashimoto's, there is a, there's an autoimmune response that's creating a heightened state of inflammation, and not everyone has all their symptoms associated with uh, hair loss just addressed by being on thyroid replacement, that they actually have to really manage their underlying autoimmune part of it as well. So let's go through the very basics. The very basic level of understanding of how thyroid hormones impact hair thinning and hair loss, especially in women, is that um, thyroid hormones directly impact the metabolic rate of hair follicles. So if there is decreased thyroid hormone circulating in the system, then those hair follicles don't have the cellular energy demands they need to help with hair growth. And that's for some people will notice that they're just their hair is not as thick as they used to be. Their hair is thinner. It's just because they don't have efficiency in their hair follicle metabolism. Now, if that's the only cause, um, if a person's hypothyroid, the minute they go on thyroid hormones, those levels should be improved, normalized, and it's corrected. Now, for a lot of women, that's, that's not what happens. They get diagnosed hypothyroid, they go on thyroid replacement, they may even increase the thyroid hormones, and it doesn't make much of a difference. And that's because there's other mechanisms in this pathophysiology mechanism of Hashimoto's that can also contribute to hair loss that just thyroid hormones alone may not account for. So one of the other ones is just systemic inflammation. So remember that the major cause of hypothyroidism is this autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's, and this leads to systemic inflammation throughout the body. And chronic states of inflammation also impact hair follicles. So inflammatory mediators disrupt normal hair follicle metabolism. So even though a person may be on thyroid hormones, if they have Hashimoto's and they still have inflammatory triggers, um, inflammatory triggers could be, for example, foods, the most common associated food that's involved with Hashimoto's is uh, gluten sensitivity. So for example, they continue to eat gluten uh, with the um, Hashimoto's expressions, they could have significant inflammation. For some other people, it's environmental chemicals. For other people, it's lifestyle factors that create inflammation. There's a whole list, host of things that can trigger the, the inflammatory response that leads to persistent hair loss in hypothyroid people unrelated to just getting the thyroid hormones replaced. So it's always a concern 
uh, when a person has suffering from hair thinning and hair loss with thyroid condition, they go on replacement and it doesn't really correct it or has some just partial impact, but it's not really significant enough. So in those cases, you always have to suspect, you know, are you doing the things you need to for the inflammatory component of the condition, which is the, the autoimmune part of it. Now, another key thing, another main reason why a lot of women with hypothyroidism have continued hair loss is really because of really poor circulation and blood flow. So, you know, one of the things you should always do is if you're if you're a female patient or male patient suffering from hypothyroidism and you've noticed your hair falling out, hair thinning and so forth, you should take your thumb or take your hand and just touch your nose and see if your nose is freezing. If your nose is freezing, you're definitely not getting a healthy circulation to your face and scalp and head. So, you know, with many uh, patients suffering from hypothyroidism, the reason that their hair continues to have issues is really because of poor blood flow and circulation issues. So the blood that you have in your body is actually nurturing hair follicles on your scalp, which is the most vertical structure of your entire body with hormones and growth factors and nutrients and peptides, all the things that it needs to develop healthy, healthy, thick hair that doesn't just fall out just from brushing your hair. So whenever you see, um, you know, whenever a person's suffering from hair loss, you, you've got to really think of that there's three unique things that are really impacting that. One is lack of thyroid hormones. The second one is the systemic inflammatory response. And then the third one is just circulation and blood flow. So if you've already been on thyroid hormones and you have um, still experiencing these issues, then these other two factors could be a big part of it. Now let's talk about the inflammatory response a little bit more, and then let's talk about vascular dynamics and blood flow a little bit more too, because those are important to discuss. So as we talked about earlier, the inflammatory response is one of the key features of, of Hashimoto's, the, the underlying mechanism of causing hypothyroidism. And the inflammatory response is one of the key factors that also not only impacts hair follicles from inflammation, but inflammatory responses from Hashimoto's have also been shown to make thyroid hormone receptors not respond as well to thyroid hormones. So you, you have like a, a impact that not only impacts the, uh, the, the thyroid hormones themselves, but also the receptor site response that takes place from, the, from inflammation. So one of the biggest things is just people that have hypothyroidism, they go on replacement, they don't have any change in their hair because they've never really took a deep dive into managing their underlying Hashimoto's autoimmune response, the inflammatory cascade. And with any autoimmunity, um, there's only so many things that continue to drive the inflammatory response. Diet, environmental chemicals, pathogens, lifestyle, um, and lifestyle could include stress, lack of sleep, and so forth. Those are things that we get into great detail. I did create a course called Hashimoto Solving the Puzzle. It's available at Dr. K News, and we really get into these various factors to address the inflammatory side of it. Now, the other part of of, of hair loss and in, in, in hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, is poor blood flow. So one of the key features of, of autoimmunity is that it impacts what are called nitric oxide pathways in the body. And nitric oxide uh, is a Nitric oxide is a biochemical pathway that produces different, what they call isomers of nitric oxide. And one of, these, one of these pathways of nitric oxide is a pathway that helps with blood flow and circulation. And that's called endothelial nitric oxide. And one of the key things is that if you're, if you're having poor endothelial nitric oxide activity, is you'll notice like the tip of your nose is really cold. Your nail beds are really, really white. Your hands and feet could be really, really cold. If those factors are there, um, then you probably have very poor endothelial and nitric oxide activity or poor circulation, which is very, very common with uh, hypothyroid patients. Thyroid hormones can have some degree of help with that, but these nitric oxide pathways can also be impacted by inflammation, and there can be a shift of endothelial and nitric oxide activity into what's called INOS activity or cytokine inducible nitric oxide activity, which is pro inflammatory. So, in a pro inflammatory state, you get an expression of decreased blood flow and circulation uh, and less, less circulation blood flow. 
So one of the things, again, goes back to really controlling the autoimmunity to change the hair loss, even from a vascular dynamic point of view. And other key things for people that have really uh, significant poor circulation is they have to basically get movement and increase their heart rate. And studies have shown high-intensity exercises have a greater effect in endothelial nitric oxide synthase activity and circulation and blood flow. So, you know, when you're dealing in a situation where, let's say you've been dealing with persistent hair loss and hair thinning with hypothyroid and, and your hair is just falling off <laughs> as soon as you comb your hair, thyroid hormones are part of it, controlling your autoimmune inflammation is part of it, and then sometimes you just have to increase your vascular dynamics by doing some higher intensity exercise. And sometimes it takes a combination of all three to reverse it. So this is why it's so frustrating for so, so many women because it's, it is a bit complex. So those are the things that are associated with just hair thinning and hair loss. Now, there's another pattern you should know about uh, with Hashimoto's hypothyroidism that takes place with hair loss. And this is the pattern where uh, people start to suffer patchy hair loss. So instead of their o overall their hair thinning globally throughout their entire scalp, they'll just have one patch, maybe an inch that is is not developing. Uh, and then they'll be then they'll go from one patch to two patch to three patch, and it takes place in their scalp. It can take place in their arms, and this is an, this is the expression of another autoimmune disease that can occur with hypothyroidism, which is, involves antibodies to phospholipids. So phospholipids are part of the hair follicle membrane, and there are a percentage of people that develop hypothyroidism, secondary Hashimoto's that also have a comorbidity with phospholipid autoimmunity. And one of the key signs with that is they get these patchy uh, hair loss, not just overall, overall thinning. And if that is something that you have, you definitely want to have your doctor check you for phospholipid antibodies. And phospholipid antibodies can lead to clotting disorders and strokes and embolisms, and it's a very serious condition in infertility. So um, that's something to, to look out for. The most common things that take place isn't really this phospholipid antibody, it's just the hair thinning and hair loss. And one of the earliest signs is actually the lateral third of the eyebrows get really thin in um, hypothyroid states. Now, that's the key thing associated with, with hair loss. So if you can remember that one of the main reasons hair loss and hair thinning takes place is really three things. Lack of hormones, uh, inflammatory responses that are persistent like from the autoimmunity and then poor blood flow and circulation. So if all three are not addressed, it's going to be very hard to reverse that and thyroid hormones may not be enough. Now, the other thing that impacts physical appearance besides um, hair that many people that suffer from thyroid notice is the quality of their nails. <laughs> so when you look at people that have hypothyroidism, they can have really, really weak nails. And also, if you like examine and look at your nails, if you have hypothyroidism, um, you can notice paleness of your nail beds. That's really due to poor circulation and blood flow. So there's multiple mechanisms that also impact nails. So one of the mechanisms that impacts nail health and nail quality is, first of all, the lack of thyroid hormones. <laughs> so if you have lack of thyroid hormones, thyroid hormones are also necessary for collagen metabolism. So if you're not, uh, if you're deficient in thyroid hormones, then you can't develop healthy collagen and healthy nails and you can get very soft and weak nails and uh, nails that break all the time or um, you can also see um, when nails are not uh, uh, are not healthy um, you can see white lines all over them or spots all over them that can hap happen because of low thyroid hormones but that can also happen once again due to poor circulation so if you have really cold fingertips really really cold uh, toes you know, one of the things that can happen is you can have lack of blood flow getting to your distal tissues. Again, uh, uh, where uh, you really have to carry and transport your hormones, your neurotransmitters, your nutrients, your growth factors, your peptides that your body makes to really have healthy nail development. So poor circulation is another issue, just like it was with hair. So one of the things is that if your thyroid hormone replacement isn't addressing the circulation issue, you may have to do more things to impact that. One of the most effective things is to basically get your blood pressure normalized if it's low, and also high-intensity exercise. Those are some of the factors. Now, with the nails, the other key thing is that sometimes when people have really poor blood flow, 
they'll start to develop fungal toenails. So if you've noticed your your toenails are starting to look really unhealthy um, and you have like these fungal overgrowths in your nails, it's not really because you got a fungal infection. It's really because you're not getting healthy amounts of white blood cells to your toes. So if your circulation is poor, remember your blood is not only carrying red blood cells, uh, but it's also carrying white blood cells. And with people that just from normally wearing shoes, there's some degree of moisture and some degree of normal fungal development that takes place. But if your um, circulation is really poor, you, you won't be able to get healthy blood cells there. So you'll just get this opportunistic fungal overgrowth. So that's another key thing to look at. Now, sometimes thyroid hormones alone will help with the blood flow and circulation issues to impact your nails. And sometimes you really have to go deeper, impact the inflammatory mechanisms from controlling the Hashimoto's part of it and also uh, doing things to improve circulation. Now, another key issue that can take place with appearance with hypothyroidism is is weight. And uh, metabolism levels can be impacted hypothyroidism. And there's really, again, two, two different types of of patterns that are abnormal. Uh, one is being overweight and one's being underweight. So, and I would say it's half and half. So half the people uh, that have abnormal, um, you know, let's say body compositions that have thyroid dysfunctions, half of them overweight, half of them are underweight. Of course, there's some in the normal range, but the ones that are abnormal. Now let's talk about the underweight ones because they get ignored all the time. So, when, when um, people are hypothyroid and they have this autoimmunity, several things can take place. And for underweight people, um, one of the things is that they can actually develop some degree of malabsorption syndromes. So with, intest- with uh, Hashimoto's autoimmunity, there are a percentage of people that actually develop these subtle malabsorption syndromes, but they have a really hard time absorbing nutrients. And we'll do a podcast uh, another podcast coming up on the gut and how the gut impacts uh, hypothyroidism and how thyroid impacts the gut. But thyroid hormones are necessary for maintaining um, healthy uh, tight junctions, which are used to absorb and transport nutrients uh, across the cell membrane. And many people that have Hashimoto's have disruption in their absorption pathways. Uh, many people that have hypothyroidism end up with gallbladder issues. So they can't tolerate fats. So they don't. So some people that just that have hypothyroidism can't eat fats. They can't tolerate eating fats. They get bloating, distension. They really also may have aversion to protein because they're not developing enough digestive enzymes from their hypothyroid state. So they just don't want to eat any kind of meat, and they really become protein fat deficient because their body just doesn't tolerate eating those things. So that can really lead to underweight patterns. Um, and then that can eventually also change the microbiome, and then the microbiome can lead to malabsorption syndrome. So there are a percentage of people that have hypothyroidism that are underweight from these underlying autoimmune mechanisms, and thyroid hormones alone may not be enough to address that, that you have to really address the other factors that are triggering the autoimmunity and disrupting their gut function and malabsorption patterns. So if you're dealing with with uh, underweight issues in your hypothyroid, then you need to know that it's more than just taking replacement, that you really have to really look at um, your, your autoimmune health, and your intestinal microbiome, and all the other factors that are involved. That's what's important. Now, you should also know that the inflammatory response from hypothyroidism has an effect on protein metabolism and development of muscle mass. So in a hypothyroid state, you can actually have difficulty building muscle. Now, you may have normal thyroid hormone levels, um, but if you have Hashimoto's uh, and you're on replacement, the inflammatory response from Hashimoto's may actually disrupt normal thyroid signaling. So even though you're taking them and your labs look good, you may not have the response to really support uh, what the, what's called protein anabolic states to develop muscle. So that's one of the things we know that can take place with hypothyroidism. And once again, it's this underlying Hashimoto's beyond just thyroid hormones that influence um, being underweight and not being able to, to gain weight. Now, other people that have Hashimoto's, so some of them suffer from being uh, overweight and having a really hard time losing body fat. Um, and this could be despite exercising and taking nutrients because thyroid hormones control the metabolic rate and thyroid hormones also impact insulin signaling. Now, the most common cause of weight issues with Hashimoto's people, once they go on thyroid replacement, is actually underlying blood sugar issues. 
So underlying insulin resistance patterns where every time they eat, they get fatigued, they crave sugar. And, and those may be just due to lack of physical activity and uh, increased consumption of sugars and carbohydrates. So we know that um, when people are hypothyroid, they can't activate an enzyme called hormone-sensitive lipase to burn body fat. And we also know that their insulin signaling pathways, things that control their blood sugar metabolism, become disrupted. But sometimes you have to actually go in there and really focus on improving insulin resistance protocols. So that would mean cutting down on carbohydrates, getting more physical activity, reducing sugars. Uh, and a person may have done that before, but if their thyroid hormones were still low, then they may have had no effects. Or if their autoimmune inflammatory response was so aggressive that it disrupted their thyroid receptor site response, then even though those things should work, they don't work. So you really need a combination of making sure you have proper thyroid hormone levels, making sure the autoimmune is under control, and then doing all the things that normally work for managing insulin resistance, like cutting down carbs and sugars and physical activity. So those are the things that are associated with weight. So we talked about hair, we talked about nails, we talked about weight. Let's talk about the skin. So thyroid hormones are also very influential on on the epidermal layer and, and skin cells. And for the most part, in order to have vibrant, healthy skin, you really need to have healthy fats in your diet, and you also need to have a healthy thyroid hormones because they have an impact on cellular regeneration of skin. So it's not uncommon to see different appearances of people that have hypothyroidism. One of the appearances is what they call the um, peaches and cream uh, appearance and peaches, peaches and cream appearance, something we'll see in exam, and that's where part of their skin pores are really big and part of their skin pores are really small and part of a big and part of large. That's a big clue that they're not getting enough thyroid hormones or the thyroid hormones that they have in their body are not working because of the underlying inflammatory response from, from Hashimoto's and autoimmunity. So you'll also see many types of inflammatory patterns or eczema or rosacea with people that have hypothyroidism issues. And it's not because of the thyroid hormones, but it's because of their systemic inflammation from their autoimmunity. So that can also take place. And we talked about phospholipid antibodies earlier, phospholipid antibodies that can co-occur with people that have hypothyroidism that can lead to patchy areas of hair loss can also be a factor for um, um, skin lesions all throughout the body. And then there's also comorbidity with uh, psoriasis that can take place where they get that white placking of their skin, which is another autoimmune disease. So, you know, the key thing to remember, first of all, is that if you, if, a per, if you have hypothyroidism, if a person has hypothyroidism, that the main cause is autoimmunity. And with that autoimmunity, other autoimmune reactions take place. It's not just usually the thyroid. So whether it's uh, autoimmune reactions against their skin that can lead to autoimmune eczema patterns, or it's uh, psoriasis or phospholipid antibodies, that chronic inflammatory redness sometimes is taking place really because of the inflammatory autoimmune response that's typically ignored because everyone looks at hypothyroid as just a hormone deficiency issue, but really it's an autoimmune issue that needs to take place. Now, outside of weight, hair, nails, skin, let's talk about joints. So joints uh, can also be significantly impacted from hypothyroidism, and the key thing is that joints can really swell up. And... Um, this is, again, not due to just thyroid hormone deficiency, but since the underlying cause of hypothyroidism is, is Hashimoto's autoimmunity, some people have uh, underlying rheumatoid patterns or rheumatoid arthritis patterns. And initially, they'll notice their, their joints will swell up and hurt all throughout their body. It could be foods. The most common foods that really trigger it uh, tend to be what are called nightshades. So nightshades include uh, things like eggplant, tomato, uh, for some people it's wheat, milk, uh, uh, sources that really trigger the inflammatory response. Other common triggers for autoimmune issues with, with rheumatoid arthritis and joint pain that is all, that's associated with Hashimoto's are foods that are, that are lectins, and lectins are basically foods with seeds in them. So tomato seeds or uh, eggplant seeds or nuts themselves, they, they have high amounts of this protein called lectins, which tends to trigger autoimmune patterns, but in particular, 
joint inflammatory conditions associated with rheumatoid arthritis. So if you have Hashim, if you have hypothyroidism and your joints are always swollen and they hurt, it's very likely that you may also have a comorbidity with rheumatoid arthritis that may show up down the road. And the most common foods, again, are wheat, gluten, nightshades, and lectins that are involved. And the last part of common things you'll see with physical appearance when, pe- when, when you're dealing with hypothyroidism Hashimoto's is just... Um, Systemic inflammation and even bloating, they're all kind of part of the same pattern. When people have hypothyroidism, again, they really have this underlying Hashimoto's as the cause of it. This underlying Hashimoto's really disrupts the gut. And when the gut gets disrupted, uh, it's, it's very easy to get protein malabsorption issues, very easy to get fat malabsorption issues because of the impact of thyroid hormones on release of digestive enzymes and gallbladder function. So it's very common to see people get sig- significantly bloated and distended all the time when they're dealing with the uh, uh, inflammatory autoimmune components of, of, of hypothyroidism. And then just the whole body can swell and become inflamed every time their immune system gets activated. So in summary, when you look at the, the main things that take place in hypothyroid states, whether it's being overweight or underweight or hair thinning, hair falling out, or poor nail health or poor skin issues or joint issues, a lot of that may not be addressed just by thyroid hormones, even though thyroid hormones play a part of it. And especially if you've already been on thyroid hormones, it's not working, and those things still persist. One of the things that may be overlooked is the inflammatory underlying part of hypothyroidism, which is Hashimoto's. And that's where you have to really learn strategies to deal with the inflammation and the autoimmunity. Uh, I created a course called Hashimoto Solving the Puzzle, and we go through all the steps that you need to know about from diet, nutrition, lifestyle, what's been published in the research, what we actually know is working clinical practice, to to learn if you if you need some direction there. You can find that course at Dr. K News, D-R-K-N-E-W-S dot com, and look for the Hashimoto's Solving the Puzzle course. Anyways, I hope this information was useful for you, and thank you for listening.